Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. Uh, I'm here today with my good friend Jeff Batari. Uh, Jeff wears many hats in the photography business, but one of his big ones is he is senior staff photographer for the UFC, uh, the uh, group that controls uh, MMA fighting. So today, Jeff, I'd like you to just kind of talk, take us, take us through your uh, your day, you know, or your evening on, on a fight night and, and, and kind of start with that and your prep and, and your what you're thinking about when you're shooting and the whole, the whole thing. Absolutely, Peter. Well, thank you so much again for having me on and being able to discuss uh, these interesting topics such as sports photography. It kind of helps us take our mind off other things that are happening in the world. And I'm, I'm absolutely, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's just I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. So, yeah, so uh, MMA in general, MMA is stands for mixed martial arts, and that's that's the sport that a lot of people practice. Now, UFC is the brand. UFC is the major brand that, um, you know, puts on. It's a promotion of fights. Uh, so with, with our schedule, uh, on any given year, usually uh, we have around anywhere from 40 to 44 events uh, per calendar year. So... Uh, in the past, it's been international with domestic U.S. and Canada. We go to Mexico City. We go to Europe. We go to Australia. It's literally a global uh, sport that people practice all over the world. So uh, with that, uh, not only are we preparing uh, for photography coverage on uh, the sport of MMA, but we're also, you know, we're, we're our own travel agents and we're our own, you know, production uh, assistants and we do everything kind of on our, on our own, uh, but within the company. So uh, on any given fight night, uh, usually what we have is one to two to sometimes three to four photographers uh, covering an event. Uh, and usually it's one main photographer that is on the octagon itself uh, and we share positions uh, with the broadcast uh, team that that actually put the event on television uh, and then the rest of the photographers whether it be media or staff uh, with UFC are are on a lower shooting position through the cage uh, so with us uh, usually the night before uh, you know, obviously try to get plenty of rest, all that fun stuff, but we'll make our, our snapshots, our templates, if you will, for each fight. Uh, and then, so once we get to the fight, the fight night, uh, we're able to use that as part of our workflow. So usually what we'll do is, um, uh, we start with photo mechanic. Uh, photo mechanic is how we apply all of our metadata and, and kind of that's the heart, the heartbeat of our workflow with UFC. Uh, and then we're also using either pro DSLR or pro mirrorless cameras that have Ethernet uh, network tether capability. So what that means is that we're basically running Ethernet cable from our uh, photography position, our assigned position, uh, running it back wow. to our computer, which is usually at a media row. Uh, which luckily for us is very close. It's only about 20 to, to 50 feet away, so it's not too far. And what we're doing is we're basically sending uh, from direct from the camera, from our shooting position, selects to our uh, computer using photo mechanic uh, and also an FTP software that communicates with the camera to allow it to transfer. So basically in a nutshell, we're sending selects from the camera to the computer uh, and then we actually have a uh, usually remote editor, remote photo editor, uh, basically ingesting uh, those selects using, now you can use anything. You can use Dropbox, you can use uh, Google Drive, you can use um, whatever works for you. You can use a simple FTP uh, functionality. And basically that remote editor is pulling on their end through Photo Mechanic all those selects that we're pushing. Uh, and so and then at that point they're using Photoshop to to crop, edit, and then send ultimately uh, to whatever site, whether it's for social media or for Getty Images, which is who we use for our image distribution. Uh, so everything has to kind of flow very live and in real time. Everything uh, is out on Getty within a matter of seconds, uh, but not not minutes. So we're, we're very quick. Turn, turnaround time is essential for anything uh, that we do. So it's not like we can just wait till the end of the night and. Uh, download cards and, and send selects then. It's something that has to happen live. So once a fight happens and we've sent all the selects through the camera, uh, I then at the end of the fight, go back to my uh, media row position at the computer uh, and then ingest the full take. And normally we shoot raw and JPEG. Uh, JPEG is just for the immediate selects and the raws are for archived 
for purposes down the road that our creative team may need for posters uh, to, you know, key art for just future events in general. Uh, depending on who the athlete is. So once everything is ingested and backed up uh, using Photo Mechanic, I'll back up on my computer itself and then I'll also actually I'll split it off and do a secondary backup on an SSD and then sometimes a third if somebody needs that right away after the after the fights are over. So it's kind of a wash, rinse, repeat each fight. Each fight I kind of reset and you kind of go from there and it's kind of like right back to it. So usually on any given night we're anywhere from 10 to 13 fights, uh, each fight usually at least three five minute rounds. Uh, so, you know, uh, sometimes the fights can go quickly, sometimes they take forever. Uh, but it's one of those things that you're just kind of, you're kind of on, if you will, the entire night. So your focus uh, has to be like just pinpoint on the entire time because you don't know when a peak action moment can happen. Uh, so that's kind of the workflow in general. Uh, do you have any questions, Peter, that you think could be relevant? So, Jeff, this is, uh, you know, I'm amazed at, at uh, the uh, advancement in, in your workflow and everything like that. But, you know, all that aside, when you when you step up and you are, you know, you're you're in your position, you're you're on the octagon. And, uh, uh, you know, again, I've, I've known from, from boxing. Uh, it can be tough when you've got two people, two points of focus, only one's facing you. I mean, what 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 are your what are your actual techniques for for you know photographing what's happening in there? Absolutely, Peter. No, I appreciate it. And yeah, you know, besides the workflow uh, aspect of it, like when it comes down to the nitty gritty, uh, focusing on actually capturing the sport. Once I'm in that position, uh, once the fight officially starts. Uh, my mind switches to kind of peak action mode, if you will. So what that means for me is I'm on my 70 to 200. Uh, no matter what camera it is, I'm, I'm on my autofocus. And usually my autofocus is just focusing on a face uh, for either side, left to right. I know with boxing, it's that if there, that's the only thing you can kind of relate it to because you you have two athletes that are left to right balanced in the frame. Usually I'm focusing on just waist up uh, to get a punch. Uh, if a kick happens and I try to zoom out as fast as possible, uh, but it's more about the punches and that, that, that kind of like peak action. Once a fighter hits the other fighter in that moment of action and we call it smush face sometimes. It's one of those uh, fun yeah. things you try to challenge yourself yeah. at capturing because it's something that doesn't happen every day, it's right? Tough. So, yeah, it's tough. It happens in literally a, a millisecond of time. So you have to literally anticipate and, and shoot, sometimes shoot the shutter uh, depending on the camera system before it even happens. So like you're you're mentally anticipating, but you have to just be on that. It's It's your brain having that conversation with your finger to hit the button and hit that shutter to make it happen within that split second. So again, it's more anticipation, uh, you know, framing uh, when there's not action, particularly during the fight happening. Let's say they're just kind of walking around each other, uh, pacing each other, feeling them out. That's when I try to make some stock photos. So I'll just try to isolate one fighter and try to make some waste up. Uh, you know, left to right, you know, just clean backgrounds, just try to clean it up as best you can shoot tighter. Uh, that's what I, we always kind of talk about industry is just clean background, shoot tighter. That's the key to success. Um, you know, so when the action isn't happening, that's kind of what I focus on and try to make some different moments uh, that could be used down the line. Uh, and then once they start engaging again, then it's kind of back to action mode. Uh, I don't necessarily lean on the shutter uh, as you would call it, like just spraying. Uh, the frames because it doesn't really do any good. I've I've tried multiple camera systems, and when you just hit the button and you just let it rip, you tend to miss the that peak action Nothing's moment no matter fast what. Enough, yeah. Nothing's fast enough. Yeah. So you can. I mean, you might as well be shooting video at that point. So there's no point. Uh, so the 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 key to it is just the anticipation uh, and finding that rhythm within that fight because each fight is going to be completely different from from the the next one. So it's something about just figuring out that rhythm timing it and once you start picking up on the timing then you just you know you're you're nailing it so it's good 
Yeah, that was going to be my next question because my experience, uh, again, it's a, it's a few years ago, that there was n your motor drive is not your friend in these situations because it is not it is it, it wasn't fast enough. And I, I know the cameras are faster now, but uh, still, it's a momentary thing. And I've always felt that it's almost, you know, there are a couple of things in sport, uh, you know, the schmush face in, in, in fighting, uh, the uh, ball on bat in baseball, uh, the ball in the racket on tennis that are really almost single frame. You know, there's just that moment and, and you've got to have that rhythm to get it. And even at, at 14 or 16 or whatever frames per second, you can go right by it. It can fall in between. Yeah. There's still a lot of, you know, a, a lot of time in that second when the camera is not taking the picture. So I, I think that's that's really key to get that rhythm and and get the, the feeling of the fight. For sure, for sure. And that's, so, uh, you know, just going back to the action, it's, uh, you know, when you're on that 70 to 200, you know, sometimes the, the action comes closer to you. So then you switch to, let's say, a near a near action lens. So you're you're going from anywhere from like a 16 to 35 to a 14 to 24, anywhere in that focal range I try to have on me. Because when they get right up on you, they're literally inches away. So you need something super wide in order to capture uh, you know, the content that's, that's coming at you. So again, just zoom range, uh, focal length, it just depends on the sport, but with MMA, that's usually my go-to is a, a 14 to 24 and a 70 to 200. Uh, and then sometimes I'll rotate, uh, depending on how creative I want to get, uh, you know, in between some pre prelim fights, I'll sometimes use some prime lenses and, and just try to make some nice portraits, like when the fights aren't happening. But other than that, it's, it's those two. Yeah, I think that would be the, the choice. I remember, you know, again, in boxing, we always used to have a, a 24 millimeter right down, you know, right down in front for that knockdown camera, you know, or if it, especially if it yeah. gets knocked down right in front of you. So, uh, so yeah, but the, you know, the, the, the 7200 versatile lens, it's, it's good in a whole lot of sports. So, um, I, I've shot a lot of boxing and I've shot a lot of wrestling and, and I know, uh, it's just kind of the same thing in, in both in both cases. I mean, you know, the the wrestling in particular, they can grapple and grapple and grapple, and you're going, oh, yeah, there's nothing happening, and suddenly, bang, it's all over. You know, somebody's somebody's got a pin, somebody's got something like that, and uh, yeah, yeah, I know the boxing was always like, you know, you I I had a I think I had a streak a a, a streak of four four boxing matches that I had shot like a total of one minute. I mean, I had they had him go just <laughs> so fast. Oh, he's down in 20 seconds, you know. But uh, and the other thing I remember, which of course you don't have to do, is uh, is loading film in in between the yes. rounds. I was crazy, timing, you know, trying to yeah. get that. Yeah. So uh, you guys really have it uh, have it figured out. Um, I think that's great. Um, I mean, what, what do you you know? Uh, what do you think the difference is between a good MMA fight, fight photography photographer and, and not not as good one? Do you have anything, any points, any things you would say on that? Uh, I think just, you know, uh, patience and like you said, knowledge. You know, I see so many uh, people, but sometimes, you know, you have your, your staff photographers for higher agencies that come in and they just nail it every time. But I've seen so many people that just know the sport. They take the time at their local gym. They know the athletes. They photograph the athletes. And then once they get an opportunity, let's say in a local, uh, you know, smaller uh, level uh, fight organization, that they're able to to see them rise to the ranks and then eventually, uh, you know, fight in UFC. It's like, you know, UFC is at your highest level. So you know you're going to get the best fights. You're going to get the best action. So we're very lucky in that aspect. Uh, so, but it's, it's, it's just being ready. Uh, because like you said, in a blink of an eye, it can be over. Uh, we've had fights, you know, last as short as eight seconds to 10 seconds to 30 seconds. So you really can't, you yeah. can't fall asleep at any point. You literally, I mean, the no. cliche is don't blink, but it's literally don't blink. Cause you just don't know when someone could throw a, a, a right cross punch that could knock them out and that's, it's game over. So, and then at that point it's over, you don't have any more chances to make frames. Yeah. So, you know, you just have to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, exactly. you're, you're lucky if you can, if you can get a jubilation shot where they're celebrating and whatnot, that kind of saves you. But I mean, you kind of want to tell the entire story. And if you don't have that action shot that, that tells that story, then, you know, your editors and your, your people aren't going to be happy. Yeah, I, I know. I have a uh, uh, one of my former bosses uh, who uh, used to work at Sports Illustrated. 
uh, now works at another uh, web industry, and uh, his complaint is that a lot of what gets moved on the on the uh, on the agencies is jubilation. Is not necessarily that that key moment, you know, that they they were, you know, that the guy who says, "Well, I got the goal," and in, in the third period at the hockey game, and you look, and there's a guy skating around with his stick in the air, and uh, <laughs> you know, so uh, I think I think you're really right on. Is it, you know, if if the guy went down, we want to see what made him go down. We want to see that right cross or or whatever. I think that's that's one of the keys, the difference between just getting some pictures from the fight and. Uh, you know, and really, really telling the whole story. And, and you have probably shot more MMA matches than just about anybody right now. So, you know, you, you should have the, the, the inside track on that. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's one of those things where you're just trying to, you know, each fight, like I said, is kind of like you, you kind of reset and it's a whole new opportunity. So uh -huh. even, you know, from, from the beginning is really when they walk out from the backstage, to the um to the prep point and they get prepped to go into the octagon so it's not just about all the action and there's a lot of moments that happen mm -hmm. before and and obviously after whether the the fighter wins or loses there's there's key moments uh that are historical uh for for their side as well as you know obviously the winners are going to be the more excited ones and they're going to want their photos. But, you know, obviously if, if a person loses, it could be instrumental for them, you know, making a comeback on the next time. So, you know, there's moments that you have to look for that aren't just punches and kicks and, you know, takedowns and all that fun stuff. But there, there's moments that you kind of have to just be ready for and just watch. Never, never put your camera down because you never know what could happen. <laughs> yeah tears and cheers and, and cheers and cheers and and uh i i, I mean one thing i've noticed and I, I think maybe you have too is sometimes the best pictures is not the winner but the loser uh that the yes. you know that this the sadness and all the work gone you know gone for nothing and and that that can make a more compelling picture than the guy who's jubilant because he won but that's a that's that's sort of you've seen that a lot but uh uh, wow. Well, I, I think you, you kind of really summed up uh, the, you know, the essence, the gestalt of, of shooting, uh, shooting uh, mixed martial arts. And, uh, you know, again, you got any other any other thoughts you have on the whole thing? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just understanding that these fighters have put, you know, six to eight weeks of training into uh, this culmination of this moment, this this three, you know, five minute round opportunity to showcase their skills. Uh, so that's why you see the jubilance, you see that that extreme emotion of, of winning and losing. Uh, and I think it's something that obviously any sport has, they have winning and losing, but this is just, there's so much more, I feel like that's kind of on the line where these guys have such a shorter amount of time to prove themselves in their skills and their abilities to advance and continue their career. So it's not like they're signing a, a, a three year, $10 million contract. You know, it's, it's, they're literally signing a three fight uh, contract with the UFC normally. Uh, anything beyond that is just up to the, how good they are. And uh, so, yeah, there's, there's limited time, there's limited opportunity. So that's why the moments within uh, MMA, no matter what level, are, are so exciting to see. Wow. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I, I hope someday I get a chance to shoot it. Um, we got to have you right. out, Peter. Well, Jeff, I, I think, yeah, get me out there, man. Get me on the octagon or not on, not in the octagon, but on it. Um, again, th <laughs> th thank you, uh, for sharing your knowledge, your experience, uh, and joining me today again, it's, it's, it's great to see you and, and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about some other things down the road. So again, this is, uh, Peter Reed Miller with on sports photography for Peter Reed Miller. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and, uh, we'll see you soon. Be safe and good shooting. I want to thank my friends at GF crew for making this video possible. If you want to make money shooting action sports, check out GF crew, go to gfcrew.com to join. It's free. They have a whole process and an app set up to help you make money shooting sports. Check it out. Get started today.